Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. One of the most commonly asked questions which I get asked is what corals are most profitable to grow? This is a hard question to answer as it very much depends on your skill level because anything you kill isn't going to be very profitable for you. Therefore in this video I'm going to show you my top 5 profitable beginner corals so you can start getting your tank to start to pay for itself. Some people may dispute some of these suggestions, however I can assure you based on my 2 years experience owning a coral farm, these are accurate. You can of course make money from any corals you grow, but this list has been based on my top sellers while also factoring in their desirability and especially growth rate. For example, there are a lot more beginner than experienced reefers, which means the market for people that will buy beginner corals is much greater than you might think especially in comparison to something like high-end Acropora. Now don't get me wrong, these are far from the most exciting or expensive corals. However, in the time it takes to grow something like a Euphilia and safely frag it, you could have sold 10 frags of something else. Number 5. Pulsing Xenia Now as always, this is a controversial one for anyone that has ever had experience with Pulsing Xenia. However, for beginners that haven't had experience, this is one of the most popular corals they buy due to their mesmerizing pulsing movement. When it comes to Xenia, the problem usually isn't growing it, but finding someone to sell it to, as it does have a reputation for getting out of control. However, I can assure you, this doesn't stop everyone and there's still plenty of people willing to take the risk. And any spare frags actually go to my local fish shop, who can't seem to get enough of them. Naturally, whenever corals are being sold in bulk to a shop though, there is less profit for the seller. However, this is far easier than having loads of people come to your house and selling them individually, so you need to decide what's important to you. Generally speaking, within a month your little Xenia frags will have doubled in size, and providing you can find a way to easily remove the extra growth from the tank, as getting your frags to attach to a new piece of rock can be frustrating, is a great coral for this video. I leave mine to grow out of control in an isolated section of the coral farm and just put frag plugs near them which they eventually spread onto and then I can easily remove them whenever someone buys it. Number 4. Green Star Polyps This is by far one of the best beginner corals you can get, which is why it's been a staple part of the reefing community since the very beginning. There are many different variations which come under the term Green Star Polyps, However, the one that I found sells the best is the ultra metallic green type with the long stem. The reason the long stem variety is important is because not only does it add a bright colour, it also adds visual movement which is key to creating an eye catching tank. It doesn't matter that I've been doing this for 15 years now, this coral always seems to find its way into my tank eventually and can easily be isolated onto a rock to keep from getting out of control. Although this isn't the purpose of this video, it's important to build your tank based on what you want, rather than what other people want. So if you like a basic coral, go for it. Number 3. Clove Polyps Very similar to Xenia but without the same level of invasiveness, which makes them far less risky and in turn far more desirable to most reefers. Although they don't quite have the same appeal because they lack the mesmerizing pulsing movement, they add movement in their own right and providing you get the right coloration, this coral can be highly sought after by both beginner and experienced reefers alike. Personally, I found them slightly more difficult to frag than other options, as previously I used a saw and they were on live rock. They were so closely clumped together, it was almost impossible to not cut through some of the polyps. Going forward, I plan to grow them in the same way I do Xenia, where I let the coral attach to a plug on its own and then remove the plug. Number two. Mushrooms. By far the least reliable but most profitable choice on this list, and if it wasn't for the reliability factor, I would have them in the number one slot. Some mushrooms are invasive and will grow out of control, whereas others can spend literally years being a single polyp. The key is getting a happy medium. I've spent two years waiting for my jawbreaker to spit out a baby, whereas my Eclectus has given me three in a few months. The price of Eclectus mushrooms is currently still high in the UK, therefore buying the mother was one of the best investments I made from a single purchase. 
On the other hand, with the Jawbreaker, my money has been tied up with that coral for the last two years, and at any point in those two years, it could have died. Therefore, it was probably a bad choice, as I could have invested my money more wisely. So far, the mushrooms I've mentioned are high-end Discosoma, and obviously this can be replicated with cheaper varieties, such as Superman and Passion Fruits, usually at a much faster pace. Growth is also scalable. For example, with the Eclectus, if I keep all three of the babies and they start producing at the same rate as their mother, I could be sitting on a little gold mine. A different type of commonly available mushrooms are Redactus, and certain Redactus mushrooms, known as bounce mushrooms, can fetch an even higher price. And if you've really got balls of steel, or in some cases ovaries of steel for the lady reefers, you can attempt to propagate bounce mushrooms where you use a scalpel to cut them in half. You can wait for them to split, but sometimes this can take a very long time. This is a high risk, high reward strategy, which I can assure you doesn't always pay off, and I have absolutely lost some very expensive pieces doing this. Number 1. Zoas. Zoas are hands down the fastest way to make money from your tank, but you need to be clever about how you do this. The majority of people will buy a frag, put it on a rock, let it grow over the rock, and by the time they have 30 polyps, the price of that Zoa has plummeted, and they've had the Zoas for so long, the original pain of the purchase has worn off, therefore they lack the incentive to recover the money as much. Getting Zoas right can be tricky. There are two options. Either find some commonly available desirable Zoas which everyone wants and try to propagate those, or try to find a new variation. New variants of Zoas start with a high price, and then that price gradually falls until it reaches a level of stability, and then that's the acceptable price for that type of Zoa. The key is getting an expensive Zoa before everyone else has it. Keep it alive, that's kind of important, and every time you can safely frag a polyp, cut it and sell it as a single head, as soon as possible to maximise the amount you can make until the price falls. The faster you can get your original investment back, the better because everything you make after that is essentially free money. Hopefully, some of you will now stop looking at your tanks as a big money pit and will start making your tank work for you. Right, that's it today guys. I hope you enjoyed watching my video. Please feel free to comment below if you have any questions. If you did enjoy it, why not click that like and subscribe button. As always, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone that supports the channel on Patreon. Have a good week, and I'll see you next time.